everything is going smart. Uh, the whole world is going through a digital transformation. And, and we at the SAIMC are particularly looking uh, in detail to what we call Industry 4.0, uh, or let's call it, uh, in other words, the industrial part of the fourth industrial revolution, which goes together with the implementation of cyber physical systems into a factory uh, environment. And then we typically talk about industry 4.0. Now the world is going digital. We all know that. Uh, uh, you can see that every day uh, if you use your smartphone. I think that's the best example of what going digital is about. Um, the question is, how is Africa and how is South Africa going to adopt uh, to that uh, whole evolution? And what you can see here is uh, an, uh, a very, very brief summary, which I need to uh, be in, in 10 minutes time frame from the World Economic Forum. Uh, and basically uh, talking about the continent, the challenge that uh, the South, that Africa as a continent, as a whole continent is, is getting is that the average age uh, of the people in this continent uh, is going to be uh, on the uh, uh, lower level, meaning uh, by 2070, uh, um, Africa will be the continent with the largest population of people under the age of 25 years. And that is absolutely going to be a, a challenging uh, thing because uh, the educational systems around uh, Africa need to adopt to that the uh, um, the approach in uh, how to get people on a job needs to uh, change in automation. And today we are talking uh, uh, around automation uh, should offer benefits uh, to uh, make this happen. And at the end of the day, a lot of opportunities are offered uh, on the African continent. Um, uh, it is a matter of leapfrogging. And I think that's kind of a key word for what needs to happen uh, in the very uh, near future. And talking about that leapfrogging and, and uh, understanding where also South Africa needs to go, President Ramaphosa installed in uh, April 2019 the so-called Presidential Advisory Commission on the Fourth Industrial Revolution, PC4IR, as they uh, call it in short. The president obviously is the chair of that committee. Um, the vice chair is the vice chancellor of the University of Johannesburg, uh, Professor uh, Chilizi Mar Marwala, who worked together with uh, a team uh, of about 30 commissioners uh, in a wide variety of topics to come with a summary report uh, uh, to be presented in March 2020. That report uh, is there, uh, is on the table, has been uh, presented not in March, but in the beginning of August to President Ramaphosa. Um, and is now uh, going to cabinet uh, for further evaluation and implementation. I just want to give you a quick overview on what the report is about. Um, and here you see uh, seven domains in which uh, activities, in which further deployment needs to uh, take part. I'm not going to go through all the topics that you see on front of, he, uh, of you, uh, but I think it is also important to mention, and that's the last bullet point, is that uh, the government is currently in the process of uh, installing a so-called 4IR Strategy Implementation Coordination Council. Uh, that is going to interact with the, pri the private and the public sector with uh, players in education and, and many other stakeholders in the South African society. We as the SAIMC uh, obviously want to sit in the first row uh, of that whole discussion platform and make sure that uh, automation as we see it, as we perceive it, uh, is taking an important uh, place in that uh, whole discussion. Now, uh, there is a 200-page report with all the details on the bullet points that you see here. 
Um, I have uh, been going through that report and it's quite exciting to see what uh, uh, Prof Marwala and his team has been done, uh, an outstanding job. The implementation is now going to be uh, the key issue to make uh, this happen to the benefit of South Africa. And in that context, I want to address two specific areas where uh, I personally, and I think I may uh, speak for my colleagues at the SAIMC as well, where we believe that uh, uh, there are two bottlenecks, two critical domains in South Africa where we need to pay uh, some extra uh, attention on. And I'm not saying that the other points are not important. They absolutely are. But uh, for the sake of time, I want to focus on those two points. And the first one is invest in human capital. Human capital at the end of the day uh, is the cornerstone of making these things happen. It's not about robots, it's not about automation, it's about people. Uh, and we need to invest in people. And um, these slides will be made available afterwards if you want to read through all the details. But the message that is given here is that we uh, urgently need to start skilling, reskilling, and upskilling people in South Africa to make sure that the knowledge base we have available uh, are in line with uh, the expectations of uh, the industrial investments of tomorrow. Many companies are uh, still planning to invest in South Africa, but at the end of the day, it is the human uh, part of the sector uh, that needs to make sure that we translate these investments intangible accents. The other domain uh, I want to address is the internet, the 4IR infrastructure, and that goes from your wired internet, your fiber connections, your international and, and uh, in, in the sea connection uh, between other continents, uh, via cybersecurity and uh, whole different uh, domains uh, are covered here as well, where I want to focus on uh, for a very uh, few moments is the wireless part uh, of the internet, the so-called last mile, as it is called uh, in an industrial environment, and that is 5G. Why is 5G critical for the future and the uh, industrial implementation of uh, 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 the 4IR? Um, you need to know that about two years ago in Germany, an, a new society, a new technology organization started called 5G ACIA. ACIA stands for Alliance for Connected Industries and Automation. And they have set forward uh, what 5G is going to be about. 5G is not about your phone being able to download your uh, your movies even faster than before. Yes, that obviously also go is going to be possible, but 5G in an industrial environment is more about your machine type of communication, where robots will talk to robots, where people will communicate with robots, uh, where there is machine to machine communication in a manufacturing environment. And 5G ACIA has put forward some very stringent uh, uh, regulations on what 5G needs to do in an industrial environment. And not that I'm going to go in all to, uh, the details here. This is one of, uh, uh, this is an extract of their white paper that you can find on their website on what 5G uh, is going to mean in an industrial environment. So it's about robots talking to robots, robots communicating with production line and even being uh, implemented uh, uh, into the uh, supply chain process, uh, allowing that a factory environment, as you can see on the right hand side of this slide, uh, uh, to, to deal with supply uh, uh, management issues uh, and to do delivery uh, management as well, and to make sure that all the steps in between uh, are as digitized or digitalized uh, as possible.